Um, hello guys and welcome to the More Than Muscle podcast. Um, how's everyone feeling? Andy, Nat and our very special guest, uh, we've got Johnny Becker in, uh, chef extraordinaire for PTs, um, making us look good and making our clients look good I think is the more important thing. Um, how, how are you guys doing? You all alright? Good. Yes. Can't complain. Oh, the, yeah, the, good. The enthusiasm is, I'm just going to let that wash over <laughs> for a second <laughs> welcome Johnny <laughs> to the podcast there we go um, thanks for having me on you, you are more than welcome um, just just so we can sort of like get people to know you a, a tiny bit better and they can immediately judge you on your on your food choices um, a couple <laughs> couple quick icebreakers of, uh, of uh, what's your dream meal if you were going to sit down and, and 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 just you know not death row it sounds a bit morbid if you ask that question what, yeah. what was your dream meal there you go um, generally something that I can't cook myself or it's too much of a faff to cook myself so something like um, like confit a duck or something like that Ooh. Ooh. he's definitely from Fisher's like potatoes creme brulee because creme brulee is a bastard to cook yourself right mm. it takes yeah. so many elements that can split and things like that so my go to is always something I can't cook myself which is why it's hard to then eat out in restaurants yeah so, so it's like a, 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 rare, a rare treat for yourself yeah no I get you <laughs> yeah. does it does it make you frustrated so if you go into a, into a restaurant and you see someone charging like 15 quid for a pasta dish and you're like I know I could make this better at home <laughs> for about 2 quid yeah, it, it, seriously, yeah. Literally, I judge menus based off of like whether I could do it myself or not. <laughs> like, yeah. It's that. really challenging sometimes. Um, so just got uh, my wife and I just got back from Marbella and it's exactly that. I'm going through the menu thinking, well, mm. I'm not having that because I can make that myself. So I'm mm. not having that and that's too expensive. Mm. But yeah, so the, mm. the, the menu that's normally 50 long goes down to about less than 10 items. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> I usually, basically, I judge the menu based on if I can see the plate. So if I can still see the plate, we're not happy. We're not no, happy. I judge the menu if I can see pictures. If I can see pictures on the menu, I'm not eating that. It's no go. <laughs> you know, apparently that um, there was a there's a higher conversion rate with less pictures on menu. Mm, that's interesting. Apparently, what? So people, if there's pictures on the menu, less people will go there. Yeah, well, they'll. they'll they're less likely to order the item that's on that yeah. menu. I guess it's less a conversion rate for, for just words. Yeah. Than, yeah. yeah you, I get you, that. I suppose, yeah, you want, you want some level of surprise. I guess you imagine the food and it's like, and you build up this big crescendo of what it's going to be, then it turns up. And you're no, like, oh. I just I just think it, yeah, I don't like the pictures on the menu. Mm. It never looks quite right. Not for me, not for me. It's always a bit shiny, I think. But um, yes. uh, I mean, there's, see, yeah. there's some stuff about like food photography they do for fast food joints and they paint the food. Um, and it's usually raw as well, because obviously when you cook food, it shrinks and it looks yeah. less appealing and kind of like, yeah, yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah. like if you look on a McDonald's menu, it's all fat and looks all juicy. Mm. Um, but it's usually raw and painted with, with stuff, which is proper, wow. proper wow. weird. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, even adverts like for cereal and things, they'll actually, um, I think they can put glue, they put glue on the spoon so the glue is dripping down not milk because right. milk Ooh. doesn't drip like it does on an advert <laughs> oh honestly it's God. crazy the world yes. we could open up a different topic to where we were going today it's <laughs> like <laughs> so what we do we paint abs on our clients oh 100% yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've seen that. Is it bad name? He just gets like a, a sharpie and just draws them on. That'll do. Job, job done. Transformation. <laughs> uh, Johnny, do you want to tell everyone a little bit more about what it is that you do? I'm aware that you're, you're helping personal trainers uh, get better results, but do you want to go into a little bit more details just so people know uh, know uh, more about you? Yeah. Um, long story short, um, I used to own a meal prep business. Um, whatever you want to want to call what happened a couple of years ago um that kind of shut a lot of things down for a lot of people mm -hmm. myself included um every other establishment became a takeaway place mm. um so they would support local and that kind of stuff so closed that went into like online training to start with um because i was doing that anyway as the side business to the meal prep kind of being wanted to be the best meal prep business in the country um, by not just providing meals, but providing training. Mm -hmm. Didn't really like it that much. And then found myself honestly really randomly agreeing to do a webinar for somebody on meal prep and then accidentally fell into this, no beating around the bush um, <laughs> and, and really love it. Like doing everything that, like it's all about fulfillment in this world, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you get that out of your day. And for me, if I can help people through other coaches um, 
get more confident at cooking, get better at cooking, um, try new things, then that, that helps me out and, and gets me through my day as well. Uh, so in a nutshell, um, I go into coaches' communities and take on all things food, cooking, and nutrition um, so that they don't have to. Um, you've probably heard it a thousand times before. Have you got any lunch ideas, meal ideas, all that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Um, I take all on that for the coaches so they can focus on sales, other areas of the business and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Mm. You talk you talk about fulfillment and uh, I mean, it, 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 it sounds incredible, but I, I, I'm sure it's not without its stresses. Um, and I, I was sort of curious about um, when it comes to like people having specific dietary requirements and needs and stuff, does that stress you out sometimes? You know, if people are uh, allergic to stuff, have particular habits, whether it be religious or personal choices, being like vegetarian, vegan, whatever. Um, it's actually a really good challenge in its own right um, to try and figure up and, and come up with recipes that they would then enjoy and they like, mm. um, because taste is such a specific thing, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, we could go around what we all like as our favorite meal or our death row meal. We touched on that a minute ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we'll all have different opinions on it. Um, mm. So I think that that's a, it's a really nice thing to be able to pass over that somebody enjoys something that I've created specifically for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there yeah. one of those that's more challenging than the other? Is there like a is is it like people that are celiac maybe that maybe it, just one that you find a little bit more of a challenge? Um, celiac, no, because my mum is. So all the meals I ever produced for the meal prep business were um, nice. gluten free, pretty mm -hmm. much uh, um, celiac friendly. It's more vegan stuff, really, because I'm not a vegan, mm -hmm. so I have to then really try and work even harder mm. for the for the like work around of that, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, because I just don't eat, I just eat, if I want extra protein, I just eat more chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, try working with one. <laughs> uh, yeah, these these two, especially on this podcast, love love the ridicule. And that's fine, that's fine. Johnny yeah. said it, v v vegans are different. Vegans are difficult. Different. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware it's not for everyone. I'm, it's, it's a, it is some hoops to jump through, and it takes you a few months to get good at it. Like, and, and that being like an exclusive effort of all of your meals. And, and yeah, I remember early days. Yeah. It was it was some cool nuggets, uh, tofu and rice and vegetables, and that was it. Um, yeah, that was, that was a pain. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the most frustrating thing for me in that is depending on where you fall on the vegan spectrum, right, and what you're doing it for, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My my biggest gripe is the fake meat stuff. Like, why do you want fake chicken or fake yep. beef sausages or anything? Mm. Like, just have vegan stuff. Yeah. It's not fake the meat alternative, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so it's an interesting one. So I've, to, I've I've mentioned this like briefly when I've gone to barbecues. I think it's more of like a social fitting in thing. Yeah. So like when everyone's having a hot dog or everyone's having a burger, you don't really want to be sat there eating a plate full of like mushrooms and and, and salads and stuff like that. So it's more like uh, you just want to feel like you're kind of there. So that's the times where I would say I probably eat a lot of it is that mm -hmm. purely when everyone else is having something similar and I want to kind of feel like, oh, we're all eating the same sort of thing together. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I do I do agree with you though. People do, uh, yeah, people, especially uh, like one of your clients as well, like they have a certain reliance on like textured soy protein and like fake chicken yeah. and stuff, which yeah, you need to, you need to dial back in, I think. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to shift it away from this because I'm going to get labeled as, <laughs> labeled as being preachy. Um, <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, quickly quick save me. Um, um, what, what drew you into the sort of uh, food and fitness industry? What sort of sparked that? Uh, has it been a, a long time in the industry for you? Um, so the f I ha I'll have to split them. So food was my dad's fault. When I was 14 years old, <laughs> he walked me up to the counter at the local yacht club and basically got me a job. Next day I was in the pot wash and that was my first hand kitchen experience. and through split shifts, uh, going to and from university, um, I literally thought I'm never doing this as a full-time job. There's yeah. no way. Um, and he here I am. So that's in a nutshell. Um, and I'm now 32. So I've kind of been doing it for a fair old time mm. um, in and around kitchens. Training wise, um, I studied architecture at uni, like completely rogue. Cool. Um, yeah. Came out, it was a recession 
didn't really want to be designing conservatories and extensions for people. So <laughs> did a PT course and then yeah. found myself into that. Um, and like everybody else ended up going online at some stage over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, fell into, fell into the coaching chef. Oh, so you started, you started, you started your personal training and then was it clients, what, what they wanted with um, nutrition and things? And then you thought, oh, I'll, I'll go down further that route. Um, actually, no, it's even more random than that, to be fair. Uh, I missed out a part of the story. Um, <laughs> I stopped personal training because I got glandular fever. Wow. Um, and then kind of never really went back to it. And then I started working as a store manager at Hollister. Nice. And then I started doing the meal prep thing on the side because I didn't really like retail and how the sh- like it wasn't that um, yeah. every week it was a different shift so there was no way you could plan anything mm. um, was it because so you had to get the kit off my days off <laughs> honestly I'd, I used to walk out of Hollister in Westfield I'd walk across the road to I think it was Morrison's <laughs> and then I'd take all the um, ingredients to my car in that little uh, I used to steal so many uh, shopping baskets and those little trolleys that you can push. Um, you know the, the, the little hole? The yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the best one. I was walking around West with one of them. Um, <laughs> I used to then get home, cook a load of food, and then literally drive it around London and the South. So wow. that's kind of how I then got into the meal prep um, because I thought it'd be more lucrative than mm. working for somebody else. It's crazy because... Yeah. We started our business in London. We used to work in Fleet Street. And I, I remember when the meal prep companies were starting to, it was kind of along the time when WBFF was getting big. And if you've heard of that, you know, physique composition that was about. And uh, I remember them, they were just getting really big. People would bring like food bags, drop them off at a local office, and then everyone would collect them at the local gym studio. And then we moved yeah. to Guildford. <laughs> And we were building our business here and it was like, it wasn't really there anymore because the corporate kind of world wasn't there. So like, I'm not even aware of that in this area. I don't even know if they do those kind of things in this area anymore or ever did. Well, yeah, so that's that was my biggest challenge is trying to, London was where the most uh, money was obviously because mm. of exactly what you just said. Um, so my challenge was trying to build up other areas and it was very, specific people that required certain things mm. and, and had the money to mm. and, and the lack of time to be able to warrant that kind of service. Mm. I think when you start stepping out of London, suddenly people magically have a bit more time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they uh, so do. That's so true. An hour long one way and then an hour long the other way. So um, my biggest challenge was, with that was making sure that the meals tasted decent mm. and that they yeah. had that level of presentation at arrival. So I would always try and deliver it myself where I could. Yeah. How do you deal with people uh, going out to eat and stuff at all? Like, you know, people going for trips into London, you know, whatever special occasions. Mm-hmm. How do you sort of keep people or help them stay a bit more on track if you know that they they love to eat out? It's a really hard one. Yeah, um, absolutely. Sure it's a, it's a struggle. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, like I would always say to people, look, if your goal is X, mm. let's try and get to the goal as quickly as you can. And you might have to just cut back on eating out because yeah. I'm going to use the royal we, chefs. <laughs> we don't give a shit about your goals. We just want you to leave a good review. Like, that's it. Like, if you're in a restaurant and you're a chef, yeah. mm-hmm. they don't care that you're supposed to be only eating this many calories and then they'll put oil on side salads, yeah. cream and butter in scrambled eggs, um, just so that you come back the next week because you've had this amazing experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I discussed it with my coaches, clients, groups about calories on the menu and how mm-hmm. I think that's a bit of a, it's a, it's a decent guide, mm-hmm. but no chef in their right mind in the busy service is weighing your food on the plate. No, no. So it's not the calories they say it is. No. Yeah. And I think ultimately, if you're going out, well, I guess it depends how often you are going out to restaurants. I think mm-hmm. if you're going out quite regularly to restaurants, then it's probably a good idea to maybe use that as a bit of a guide. Mm. But let's say somebody goes out to a restaurant once a month and it's like a, a big thing to go out to a restaurant and then they start being guided by these calories that are then on the menu and they'll probably be totally wrong anyway and then you yeah. they've influenced your choice of what you're going to to eat that evening 
And maybe you pick something that you don't actually really want to eat, but it's because the calories are staring there. And that's like your one time at the restaurant. So I think it's, I think there's positive, positives and negatives to it. What's your take on it? Yeah, it definitely has its place. Yeah, no, I was, was going to ask, what, what's your take on it being there in general? Uh, whether it be like from a, a mental perspective for a lot of people struggling with like orthorexia, anorexia and stuff. From, from that camp, uh, I don't think it's a good idea at all because mm. like you said, then, then choices are um, even more restrictive for people. Mm. So like that, um, the confit of dark that I mentioned a moment ago, I had it in a restaurant <laughs> probably a month ago. What mm. restaurants do you go to, bro? 1300 calories. Yeah. <laughs> what restaurant do you go to <laughs> to get that? Where are you going? <laughs> to Chichester. <laughs> I mean, if it's bulking season, thirteen hundred calories yeah. sounds uh, sounds yeah. about on the money. Where are you going? <laughs> Not McDonald's. <laughs> a lot, a, a lot, with our clients we used to especially when we was in London we used to kind of give them lists of like, like we used to call it like real world fat loss and would be like look if you're going to Pret and that's where your cor- corporate lunches are like these are kind of good these are bad these are like in between make good choices and it used yeah. to work because a lot of it was out of their control as well because they'd get Pret would just bring a big like shelf of food so we kind of like said look just keep to these things but it's hard with like the stuff on the calories with, with, on the menus and stuff because it's like absolutely not correct. But then mm-hmm. I look at like my dad, for example, and we went out to Coat in Chichester about, I don't know, maybe two months ago. And he always gets burgers, right? And the burger on yeah. there was like nearly 1,700 calories. And he picked the roast chicken, salad and potatoes and it was half the calories. So in that instance, even though it's not accurate, he kind of made a better choice. But then at the same yeah. time, I'm like, he really wanted the fucking burger. <laughs> so like, it, I think it all depends on the perspective you're looking at it. Because if you've got the goal and you want to get healthier in so much as like your body weight, I guess having the better choice is better. The awareness is there. My, my, my take is that I think restaurants should have the calories on menus as an option. So that if you are being conscious and you want and you want to know what's in everything, then you should have the ability to have it, but also the ability to not have it. Um, yeah, I mean, I know, I know, I know it's it, it, it's a it's an attempt by the government, but I think you should still have the option to have it, basically. Yeah, mm. good idea. I, st- I still think it goes back to we we spoke about this in the other episode. We need to be doing more at school about educating people on what all of this stuff is. And then it doesn't actually matter anymore. This is like a papering over the cracks for the crap that's happened previously. So I think it needs to go back to that. But, hey, I mean, Boris just stood up in government and went, hasta la vista, baby, and left. (laughs) So, hey, come on, what chance have we fucking got with these guys? (laughs) Johnny, do you do anything with, like, the younger generation, or is it all... You took the words out of my mouth. Oh, really? That's a great Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Not currently, but I have just been um, talking to somebody locally where I might be doing a lecture at Chichester Uni. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Um, Nice. So, yeah, so that I might be able to get in... Again, slightly younger generation for that, but not not ventured into like even younger, like grassroots level stuff mm. yet. Yeah. Um, but I agree with Andy, it's, it's 100%, that's where it needs to be, right? Yeah. Like instead of in home economics at school, doing salads that look like faces, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which should be oh, nothing about calories. <laughs> I remember doing food tech at school and we all used to have to walk up the stairs and our food tech teacher was so unfit that she had to take the lift so straight away all the kids were taking the piss and then the thing that we were doing was like making the most unhealthy like cake I can't even remember it was like cake and pasta bakes and but it was just like crap basically it was full of everything oh, yeah. and there was no like awareness of what was going into it it's like whether that's healthy or not still give me an education on what yeah. I'm putting into that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we're kids, we want to have fun and eat good food, right? And fun food. But there's just no awareness. It's just like, put that in the oven for like 10 minutes and then pull it out and then let it rest and then you can eat it. Do you know what I mean? Don't even wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> just go. <laughs> Johnny, that, uh, so you're talking about you doing a, a, a lecture at a uni. Um, the, 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 I mean, you have the cliche, uni students are broke. Um, Unless it's Cambridge, maybe. Um, <laughs> and I think there's a perception that eating healthily is expensive. 
Um, it is you now. know, it, it, well, I mean, <laughs> just eating period is expensive yeah. now. <laughs> eating, <laughs> but uh, but healthier options. You know, if you if you want the organic stuff, if you want, uh, I don't, I don't know, um, whatever it may be, the, the the better quality cuts of meat. If you if you're a meat eater, it's it, it gets more and more expensive. So how do you work around uh, creating meals on a lower budget for people? Um, Fish in a rice. Well, I, I guess I'm <laughs> unique in its in its sense that I had the meal prep business, and all the meals I produced for coaches' clients are meal prepped from that perspective. So they're all like cost saving from a profit perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they're generally pretty decent. Um, as as much as they're packed with vegetables, I made sure that they were like more simple versions of them, um, and maybe just using one vegetable instead of four but just doubling the portion mm -hmm. um i also like to say to people that let's not be too romantic with the idea of prepping everything from scratch like um uh chopped peppers from aldi or wherever you get them from i think it's aldi is where i've got the last lot from mm -hmm. it saves you the time of doing it you don't get seeds everywhere they defrost in seconds mm. and you can just add that to your carb base couscous quinoa rice whatever it is yeah. and you haven't got to spend the time doing it so actually that's relatively cheap in that in that option so maybe yeah. going you kind of have to supermarket surf a little bit yeah. there are certain yeah. places even wholesalers pot noodle so again when i had the meal prep business <laughs> we went to booker which is macro for people nearer london all that kind of stuff yeah. it seems cheap but some of the stuff is double or triple the price of normal supermarkets mm. So you have to kind of pick and choose your battles of where you get stuff from. There was there was actually a TV program not long ago. I think your mum was watching it. At Costco being not that cost effective. Uh, it's like yeah. what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, I mean, we do the same thing with like berries and stuff. We yeah. get frozen berries because they just last longer. They go a longer way, and then you can put them in. Yeah, I agree. I think if something, I think if something is uh, is there and it's prepped, then you're way more likely to just grab that than you are. I don't know, to maybe make a more unhealthy option, like on delivery. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Johnny, so uh, a segment we're doing uh, this season is over-under. Uh, we'd usually do it with exercises uh, for people and things that we, we think not enough people are doing, some people should do more. This week, we just thought we'd, we'd, we'd mix it up a little bit and do uh, foods instead, over-underrated foods. <laughs> and you Love can it. give your perspective, which I imagine has a little bit more authority than our threes, um, and you can and you can judge me based on my selections. Um, okay. I picked a th three overrated foods: uh, kale, chicken breast, and peanut butter. Thoughts. So overrated. Overrated in in for, from, yeah. from 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 my opinion. I my, I'll, I'll explain my rationale first. Kale, I just think, had a big boom in the noughties with everyone becoming obsessed with it going in everything. Uh, chicken breast. I think it's. Just, I remember when I when I used to eat meat. It was a super lean cut, which is, you know, nice, but there was no flavor in it. Um, and I remember I had a client of mine um, who would come in and he would be complaining about how much money he was spending on trying to hit his protein targets because he was eating like six, seven chicken breasts a day. And I was like, my guy, there's, there's other <laughs> ways we can do this. <laughs> um, and I think generally speaking, just peanut butter in general, I, I don't know why. It's like salted caramel and pulled pork. Again, it's one of those foods that just kind of got a... Uh, a big hit of it's got to go in everything and mm. if you put peanut butter on it people will buy it it's when people say i just had a high protein meal peanut butter I'm yeah like, exactly you're like yeah, the fat content is high i think it's the perception that it's high protein and the fat content or more of the energy comes from fat than it does from protein um which are th that, that that's my rationale for those three but johnny do you want to do you want to give us your your take on that on those three on those three being overrated okay so I agree with you on kale. And the other thing with kale is it's a bitch to prep. Like the stalks in it, it honestly, it takes forever yeah. to get the stalk bit out, which is the bitter part. Mm. Um, so I completely agree with you on that. Um, chicken, yeah, you're right about the other alternatives. I mean, turkey to name one, uh, quite close, yeah, maybe a bit bigger in size, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that has its place. Like a lot of people, if you, if you try anything new, right, mm -hmm. in terms of meat, everybody says it tastes like chicken, right? So at least yeah. there's the, we have the middle ground of taste yeah. of where people can gauge everything else on. Mm -hmm. um, 
And peanut butter. I don't even like peanut butter. So I completely agree with you on that as well. Damn. Um, yeah. I remember I used to I used to, I used to get home from school when I was a kid and my older brother would be sat on the sofa with a jar of peanut butter and he'd get a even he double down he'd have a peanut butter Kit Kat chunky and be exactly. dipping oh, and no. scooping no. and going I for think, it. <laughs> I think the current peanut butter like alternative is lotus biscoff. Oh, biscoff. biscoff. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on everything. I quite like a, uh, Biscoff is is nice. Mm. It's it's horrible. It's it not is good, good for you. But it's just this, like if you're talking about like, from a calorie perspective, mm. um, yeah. Oh, no, I'm not a fan not of good. Biscoff. No, it's too calorie dangerous. or taste. Yeah, hundred percent. I'll bang a jar in a sitting. I reckon. No, it's easy. easy. Light work. Oh. It's also vegan, so gang gang. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that. It's that and Oreos are the two like accidentally Oreos. vegan things, and then you're just like, yes, someone just forgot to put milk powder in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, the, the the two foods I picked for underrated, I picked are kiwis and lentils because I think uh, it was kiwis being higher in is it potassium than bananas. Just being like one of the most micro uh, nutrient dense foods going, right. but I find that no one really eats them a whole yeah. lot with the skin on as well. You have to. Oh yeah, you you can. I think I still think you're wrong, and if you eat kiwis with the skin on, but um, have to eat them with the skin on. No, no, you've got to eat them with the skin on. More fiber, more exactly. vitamin C. Well, I know, and, and you don't eat skin. Exactly. Oh, that's true. That's, oh, mate. What about the little bit at the top of a kiwi though? Eat it all, I'll just mate. throw it out the window. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I eat a lot, mate. <laughs> so I, I, I'm just, sorry, no, I don't just throw everything out the window. If I'm driving <laughs> along, that goes in a bush. I'm not just <laughs> launching some out the window. <laughs> I'm I'm just, I'm no just... kiwi bit. My name's gone. <laughs> I'd hate to walk past your house. <laughs> I'm just imagining Johnny's a bit like Johnny's a bit like Donkey Kong in Mario Kart. Just checking the banana peels are going out everywhere. It's, it's the whole show. Yeah. Um, the other underrated one I had were lentils because I think people can't cook them properly, yeah. and that's why people have a negative perception of them. Um, do, yeah, that's true. They do take a while to cook, but then mm. you again. My everyone that taught me how to cook is probably going to have a complete fit. Mm. But just buy the tinned lentils. That all you need to mix them with rice, like, mm. and you don't even need to cook them and waste. Your, I mean, with bills and electricity prices all going up, just buy the tin. Save you money. Yeah. Oh, that. Big dish in Cyprus is rice, lentils, and Greek yogurt, and you just put it together. That's your dish, and it's so high in protein. Yeah. It's like poor man's food, isn't it? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. mix in with some peas. That's high in protein and as well, bit, and a bit of peanut butter. Well done. Boom. <laughs> bit, a bit of lotus biscoff, biscoff spread oh. in there too. Maybe a flake. <laughs> but we're getting rogue now. Some crazy, <laughs> crazy dessert. <laughs> Let's crack back on with some with some uh, more factual stuff rather than our opinions about uh, what foods are good and bad. <laughs> um, uh, Johnny, um, I suppose much like the fitness industry, uh, the food industry must be in a in a similar boat of new studies, new information, always evolving. Um, has anything surprised you recently that's come out? Um, I don't know with how much reading you do outside. I, I imagine a fair bit to keep hot on uh, on what's good for you, basically. Um, it, I guess it is a minefield like everything else. Mm. Um, everything has con contrarian opinions as well. Yes. Um, and it's just kind of, I guess it's a question of like picking your battles, right? So, um, Something I, bu I bumped into, I bumped into recently, um, study-wise, was like all the thing about plastics, right? And how mm. even tin food has various levels of plastic in it, and it's mm -hmm. not good for um, uh, male testosterone levels, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, me being male, um, you kind of like your, your ears prick up, and you start to think, what well, what else can I be doing to to do this? But actually, I'll bring back to what I said a moment ago about just like your goals, like. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to just pick and choose where you lie on um, the research that you read and the things that come out and, and not necessarily take everything too seriously, even though some people are trying to be like good to you. Um, yeah. the, the latest one I did as well was um, somebody asked me about um, if oil is better for you cooked or uncooked, mm -hmm. right? And it's just that when you take it too high, um, it, can, it can become inflammatory. Yeah. But it's like, it, this would then stop people eating oil altogether, right? Because 
you you sort of hit oil and inflammatory bad right i'm not eating and touching oil ever again yeah. Yeah. and then you start to get into this downward spiral of i don't know like over restriction and then nobody's ever going to get a result because they'll always have these blowouts at certain points in time so it's kind of just like this juggling act of managing all these things um and then even passing that information on to other people like even now on this somebody might go well i'm never no i'm never touching oil yeah. again this yeah. 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 game of me so yeah i think that's the biggest challenge to be fair is trying to put it across in a certain way as much as it might be your opinion you need to just be aware of like how people are then going to receive that i guess mm. yeah i do think as well we're so we're far more exposed to comments now like that or um like on podcasts or on instagram or that somebody said on their stories or whatever well, and don't be criticizing podcasts now that come no, on no i'm not criticizing <laughs> our podcast <laughs> But it, it, the information is out there, and even if you don't want to hear it, you'll hear it. Whereas before, we would have to physically like search through things and Google things. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, it's just being plastered onto us. Um, so yeah, I just think that it's uh, yeah, people. If even if we don't want to hear it, it's there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the line. It's of, hard to sift through. It's the line of how much authority to stamp on something. Because I think there are there are certain points as a professional, whether it's you're you're in, you're in food or fitness, and you have to tell a client something, you've got to put it across in a way that they don't believe the, the opposite, or they or they they have to they have to buy in enough to take you seriously, but not so much that they actually become afraid of something. Yeah, and, and it's also, a fine line. But also, I think there's too many professionals that are coming from research, but they haven't been taught how to read research. And it's like, well, then what place have you had to talk about research? You, you've never been taught to read it. And that's a big mm -hmm. problem, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to like, um, uh, what is it? It's an implementation over information problem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see this with coaches all the time where, they're pumping in uh, recipe books to their groups and their clients and that kind of stuff. And sometimes like they don't need any more recipes because if you give them a recipe book, how many recipes do you really try every single week? One, <laughs> yeah. maybe, exactly. maybe two. So if you have 40 recipes in a book, that's going to last you, what? 20 years. 40 weeks at least, if not 20 weeks. Quick maths. Quick maths. <laughs> yeah. I, that's why I picked those numbers, Max. <laughs> Try any other soon. <laughs> Why don't you do a calculator? Um, but no, it, it's, it's a serious... I had a conversation with a coach who said um, he didn't want to go ahead with me um, because he said he had 200 recipes in his group and he was going to get them to use them first. Yeah, but they aren't already. So yeah. like, let's just give them one and give them another recipe to cook in their arsenal because... Mm. What is it? People have 10, 10 things they cook or 10 things that they, they do each week and they just repeat it. Yeah, and it's just how to add another one to that to that list. Yeah. I think I might start one. Cook on coal, save gas. Barbecue <laughs> king. Sell it. Andy, yeah. Andy is the barbecue Andy is the barbecue king. Like. You barbecue on no. gas, get out of my face. So, <laughs> see, I had um, a conversation with somebody the other day. I was asking for barbecue recommendations, so I might hit you up after this, Andy. And, you know, oh, and, there and we go. <laughs> um, but it was some. It was somebody saying that oh, um, as soon as you burn food on a barbecue, it's, it's carcinogenic. Good, right? <laughs> I don't eat it to be healthy. Not, no, no. <laughs> you really cut down on it. No. Uh, <laughs> and it's just like it. it it's just like really, yeah, really, do yeah. we really need to go down yeah. that level of? It's mad, isn't it? Of, of intent, I don't know. I'll have a beer though. That's coming. That's also coming back to um, pro, like foods going through a process to be then frozen or tinned, as well. And mm -hmm. when you're looking at vegetables or beans and legumes, it, I would say buy buy it if it's frozen. Buy if it buy it if it's in a can because you're way more likely to use it i know i've got a jar of lentils yeah. like raw lentils i haven't mm. been cooked yeah. and i haven't used them I'll, also, I'll never use them they're just there to look good and also, but <laughs> i'll never cook them also the process is good for it and yeah. so like this whole word of being processed is sometimes over like it's well, over popularized because the process is good that's why they've done it <laughs> some foods need to be processed like you can't eat a raw potato yeah. like, and that is a process <laughs> 
Mm. And most food that's been frozen in in like vegetable form is probably fresher Mm. than without it's being set on the yeah. vegetable aisle in the supermarket yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. being touched by everybody fondled <laughs> <laughs> I love a little wrinkly aubergine think about that next time you bite into an apple when you haven't washed it how many oh, people have no. that first <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see Johnny now in a, in a fruit and vegetable oil, uh, f- just just fondling various things. I mean, <laughs> it's next real. You can- <laughs> I don't just go in and fond of willy nilly. It's not like that's how I pass my time. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a likely story. <laughs> We've got to check the freshness of things. I mean, avocados are a bloody nightmare, though. I mean, everyone and their mums is is like giving them a quick squidge on the top. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind that though because that's got like that's the skin. But whereas an apple. You're eating that. You've really made me think now. Mm. <laughs> so are you supposed to wash it? Or, no. Like, that's what the old... Do you know what che- I mean? Chest rub. That's what that's for. Why do people rub apples on their chest? Oh like, my God, no. I was doing that no, the other day. No, I do day. it. I know, no, I do it. It's one of those things I do unconsciously though. Yeah, the I thing don't is, think about it. If you watch cricket, you'll end up starting doing it like this. <laughs> on the inside <laughs> of your leg. <laughs> Before hurling it 12 feet away from you. <laughs> oh, <my day. laughs> Have you got any uh, any signature recipes you'd say, Johnny, that are like just just winners that that always go down well or something that features in a lot of your clients' uh, uh, meal plans just because, I don't know, they're convenient and people just love how it tastes? Chips. Chips. <laughs> Deep fried, yeah. Always. Um, Dipped in uh, I spread. love I love recommending um, my med chicken base, which I had it from the meal prep business. Um, chop down peppers or just buy them from the frozen section. Courgettes, red onions, tomatoes. Mm. Um, roast them off, pull them out, throw some couscous over it, cover it for twenty minutes, and boom, done. The couscous um, gets steamed by the yeah. veg juice. Awesome. Um, so once you've done that, you've got your base for the week. Um, and you can just you can interchange yeah. the veg as and when you want as weeks go by. Mm. Um, you can add aubergines in peas, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and it's just a really nice, quick, easy base. You can eat it hot and cold. Lovely. Send it to. That me. sounds good. It does sound good. But I, I, I remember. I think it was. It was. I was watching Peep Show once, and he just. He. I think he described the uh, couscous as tiny grains of misery. Oh, I've never been able to. <laughs> never been able to unhear that exact you know, phrase. I really like the big couscous. <laughs> Giant couscous. I love the giant couscous. I just prefer yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So nice. Lovely. That's the good stuff. I mean, you're talking about having like loads of loads of veggies um, in, in a pan there. Um, is, is there, it, do you commonly find that fussy eaters make your life quite tricky? Being like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like the texture of this. Um, uh, or do people, yeah, or when they're guess... coming to you and they're taking their health and fitness seriously, are they all in? They'll just like, I'll eat whatever you tell me to. I guess the taste obviously has a part to play, right? As we said at the very mm. beginning, it, it, there are so many different spectrums on it. And then what's might have scarred them from childhood. Um, I didn't touch on the peanut butter story that scarred me, that my nan in the middle of the store asked me if I'd tried it. She popped the lid off, stuck her finger in it, and then stuck it in my mouth. Oh, and that oh. might be why I don't like it. Understandably. Um, I just didn't touch know that, that was the situation, right? <laughs> um, so you just don't know how, why people don't like veg and things like that yeah i would in, a, in an ideal world just shut up and eat it like just mix it into other things and put a sauce over it and mm. it's fine mm. um because ultimately yeah like if you just keep eating beige food i've seen there's loads of fitness accounts that just post beige, beige food yeah. and i think it gives the wrong message to people that they then don't need to eat vegetables mm. or anything yeah. on the color spectrum yeah i think that's become way more popular in the last like five years there's always like um, uh, higher protein versions of something that you wanted. So people opt for that. And then all of a sudden their whole food, their (laughs) entire day is just from like packets or like high protein versions of something. Mm. And then then, um, sweeteners and low calorie this and low calorie that. And they never, they haven't actually eaten much fruit and vegetables. (laughs) I, f- I do find that funny. People's branding has such a, a massive impact on people's perception of food. You put mm. the word protein on almost anything. You get a Mars protein bar now. Um, yeah. And it just seems obscene to me that people buy into it that mm. much and consider that health. <laughs> yeah. It's like the word vegan. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about colourful food, my guy. <laughs> Have you seen your barbecue? 
It's all, it's all beige. <laughs> He's just got a banged half a lamb on it. I like beige. Beige is, is <laughs> nice. <laughs> But it's still got the wool on it. It's got meat on it now. <laughs> the barbecue will singe the wool off. For Lovely. All good. <laughs> it's extra texture. Now I'm cooking my fingers. <laughs> and then fondle some apples. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's, that's, that's a yeah. thing I had to, I had to ask. Cool. Oh. Lovely. I think, um, yeah, I think I've asked everything that I wanted to. <laughs> so I, I've got a question to ask. Go on. So in terms of... The thing that I'm most conf- in- confused about your service is the digital chef bit. I get the like meal prepping and giving them recipes, but what's the what is that? Tell everyone what that is. Um, well, apart from giving the coach freedom and time back, uh, like I say, to focus on other areas of the business, um, I I become a member of their staff effectively. Right. Um, so I go into their communities, whether that be on Facebook mm-hmm. membership sites. Telegram, Instagram, WhatsApp, whatever it might be. Um, And I'm the one that deals with those questions sort of like on support through the day. They can ask me questions, how to cook this, blah, blah, blah. Um, And I will then give them feedback so the coach doesn't have to. So the coach doesn't have to keep answering the same questions. And then if it's a common question, I make it into content and then post it back into the group so it's there forever. Cool. That's cool. That's wicked. Yeah, that is cool. I was thinking that you were staying on Zoom like like cooking it and they were co- copying you like I'd like to but like the, I'm yeah. doing one actually next week um, like a live cook along yeah. uh, so I'll tell you how it goes I don't think it's going to go as well as I think because yeah. everybody will be at different stages of yeah, um, yeah. competency in the kitchen um, I, I hope it won't be but I my vision is that it might be a bit of a free for all and a bit of a mess I did we'll um, I did a live cook along in lockdown and I hosted the live cook along and I put the I was doing a banana bread shock, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> I put the banana bread in the oven, and then I looked at all the comments because oh, yeah. then they start coming through, and they were like, "What do we do with the eggs?" <laughs> that, that I forgot the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and I forget the eggs in the live cook along, so I had to pull it out the oven. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, everyone, oh. get your banana breads back out the oven. <laughs> this is, trust me, this is part of it. This is part of it. <laughs> yeah. I know. So and then, then I, yeah, so I didn't do a live cook along again. I was like, why am I trying to do this? Now, you, you don't do this stuff. You're a trainer. <laughs> Be a trainer. <laughs> the gyms were closed. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So that was my experience. So I'm sure yours will go way better than mine. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I might burn something maybe, but it's all part of it, right? If we're exactly. Not all, we're not all perfect all the you time. Can, you can style it out. So it's, yeah, yeah. I think, I think we'll, every occupation has that exactly. It's like it burns a little bit and then suddenly like, mmm, lovely crust. If you, you can't really charred it, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Caramelised. <the> <laughs> more char, more flavour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us Johnny really really appreciate it likewise honestly thanks for having me on where, Enjoyed can, the chat. where can people find you shout it out on your instas how do people find me yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the coaches chef on Instagram um, or LinkedIn or Johnny Becker on Facebook any any way any way it's possible yeah lovely Boom. or in the description below if, if you have one of those yeah, yes. do it do it do yes. that bit and do that well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right there there you go <laughs> or there, or there. Yeah. wherever it might be <laughs> somewhere <laughs> somewhere you'll find him <laughs> go check the man out and uh, thanks so much Johnny we'll appreciate it and we will we'll catch you guys next week cheers